and Lena slash Starlong. And we will be turning down the heat a little bit on the uh, level and uh, stamina of these See you next time on the dance. Um, so we'll have Wolf's Rain, which is a 14. Um, Genie's Nocturnal Days, which is also a 14. And then uh, Tiebreaker will be Never See You Again, which is a 16 with a... Uh... Gotta slow down. I don't remember it well. Wolf's Rain is a really fun 14, pretty scorable 14 for people who haven't played the new songs a lot. Yeah. So we'll, uh, it'll be really interesting to see the uh, Marvelous Attack um, from both players on Wolf's Rain and Uni's Nocturnal Days because they're on the lower end of the scoring difficulty for 14s. Um, a lot of people identify them as like a first AAA candidate or a first couple of AAAs. Um, so, you know, there are a decent number of players who even have them as their ceilings. Um, both of these players should be pretty experienced with each of them, I'd, I'd wager. Um, we were just taking a little tournament selfie uh, before they opened up their song folder, celebrating coming here together to play a set in this event against each other. Carrie, all the way here from Korea, and uh, Lena from Austin, Texas. <laughs> I wish the cameras were on Carrie and Lena right now, because they are just dancing on the pad. They're having a great time. Lena is such an extremely high positive energy person. She almost can't not be when it's, you're, you know, watching her do anything. It's, it's hard to be sad around Lena. So we talked a little bit about her no bar form last time. Um, this is going to be a slightly slower song. And uh, yeah, very capable of timing. I think it's entirely likely we see PFCs from both players on this one, which be cool. It's actually very hard to get a PFC in a tournament. Lena double stepping a lot of these age nodes. Sometimes you see Nova players can't a bit more towards choosing crossovers, but not always. Especially on eighth notes. We've got a little face drop here. Some step jumps. I haven't counted the perfects, but I'm pretty sure Lena's score is terrifying so far. I think you're right. They're both still pretty close though, and we haven't reached the hardest part of the song, so this could shift. moment where commentators don't want to say anything because both players are yellow and no one can think of something to say that's not going to ruin it. A classic. See, I didn't ruin it. Not superstitious. Oh no. I doubled down. It's okay. Okay. I'm you okay with down it. And I, got I said one. what I said. I Lena holds on through the whole song. Difference of 10. A uh, flag from both, and yeah, again, like, noticing that both players got a 998 flag, and then realizing that our perfect counts are 30 and 40 is uh, a little bonkers. Yes, that is fantastic work on a 14. And we'll see both of them uh, have high have, PFCs. Yeah, they have high PFCs. They're both uh, sub 30, it looks like. I'm good at math. Can I math? Yeah. One in a series of Camellia bangers. I, I don't think I've ever met somebody who didn't like this song. Cheering up the crowd as she does. But yeah quite potentially even higher scores on this song than the last one. We will see. Got early grade from Carrie, but that's not going to determine anything. Yeah, difference of 5EX early on, partially due to that grade, but still looks like a pretty strong timing beginning from both of them, able to find the beat on it right away. 
Lena now crossing over the eighth moves. Negotiating those 12 note runs and triplets perfectly well. Staying ahead by a little under 10. Elena also playing arrow behind combo. Somehow that didn't strike me until right now. I don't know if that's her normal setup. Yeah, either way, it is not getting in her way at all. And there is a deal breaker jack in here that could just completely swing it. I'm sure both players know exactly where it is, but... Still, that seven you pointed out a few seconds ago is close to like four to five, and I just saw a few perfects. Now it's two, one. All right, spicy ending. Now carried by one on the last... Last step before that break, she got ahead by zero and then one on maybe like two or three consecutive steps, holding on to one right now. All right, the ending is gonna determine this one. Wow, holds ahead by two. A very shocked herself a bit at the end of that one. Way to go. Everybody's chanting for Carrie. And the difference is one great. Absolutely fantastic. Everybody's so hyped. Even the players are hyped for each other. This is beautiful. I remember when Carrie was at the same skill level as like me. All right, never see you again. Um, so this has a slowdown in the beginning, and then it kind of trips you up towards the like towards the end, and makes you think there's going to be another slowdown. Um, it's a Yuichi song that's very similar to the series that has like endorphin and norepinephrine and dopamine. Um, but I, I wouldn't say it's as rhythmically complex as a lot of those are. Um, it's probably like the. It's on the easier end of the rhythms for that set of songs, but it's by no means an easy chart. Lena's record score is a bit lower, but I think we already saw in her last set that that might be lies. She's probably played on a different account before. That probably also explains the uh, arrow behind combo, so kind of don't know what to expect. The other thing is this is an extra savior in A20+, plus, so for all we know, she just unlocked it and never, you know, saw it again. Very strong start from her. There's that slowdown. Very Little great slipping into the slowdown, but she clearly knew how to handle it. I certainly don't remember where the speed up is. Let's see if they right do. There. Very nice work. Yeah, it looks like Lena a little more familiar with the song. In particular, you could tell in handling that slowdown. And now also handling everything after it, almost. I mean, after winning sort of a timing contest on the first song and coming very close on one of the second song. It's neat to see, neat to see her uh, play a way more stamina intensive song than either of those two. And here's where it baits you into thinking it's gonna slow down, but it does not. Ooh, Perry oh, no. gives up. Tap out from Perry. That's always unfortunate. It's a tough situation where it seemed like she didn't know the song as well and could tell she wasn't going to catch up. There's a certain point at which you want to conserve your energy, too. You don't want to burn yourself out. Yeah, it's very it's real very and safe. very valid if you have more tournament left. Like, I, if you, for everybody watching, like 16s are 
hard. Like, we might talk about something being hard, like, like they straight forward or what have you, but that is hard. They did fantastic. A cheer for both of them. Yeah, I mean, we sort of talked a little bit um, at the beginning of this round about how, just how grueling tournament days can be. No matter how well you can play hard songs normally, it's just not an easy or friendly setup to come on here and play 16s. Even once you get warmed up to stand up, like two of them sit back down, it can be really rough on your legs. Yeah, it's, it's a long game, really. Like, are you getting enough sleep or, you know, what? Did your plane get delayed? Not, by the way. No, Nobody nobody's here getting enough sleep. There are so many factors that go into playing well here that any your performance on any one given song is not reflective of who you are as a player. You will sometimes perform so below your standards. Um, sometimes you will meet or even exceed your standards, and that's incredible. But this is it's a labor of love. These players are working hard, and it's incredible to see, and we're so happy to be here. Yeah, we talked about the physical challenges, but Keeping up your focus on a tournament day in the way you would when you're playing in a relaxed setting is incredibly hard. You're anxious, you don't always know when you're gonna have to play or what you're gonna have to play. You can't pace your, your day yourself. It's just so different from normal playing. You have to be nice to strangers sometimes. That's scary, that can be scary. Uh, we have Malia and Eggplant, both of whom we've seen so far this round, and Unreal, a song we've seen played once so far today. It's unreal that this was wrong twice. I got a little excited because I thought there was a sing-along going the first time we heard it, but there wasn't. It was just the headphones actually, like, I could hear the song better than I can on a cabinet. I don't, maybe other people have had a different experience. I feel like this song is really quiet. I haven't thought about that. I remember thinking I liked the lyrics to it, but I was just excited to find a rock song in Ace when I was first learning this game. I think the guy in the background looks like Chris Angel, and that's a little distracting. So, reminder from a few minutes ago, most of what characterizes this song is eighth note step jumps. Eggplant takes a couple steps to find the timing as the song starts up, but then locks right in, responsible for about a 5EX difference. Malia, we've said before, is someone who generally has terrifying MA. But this is going to be, uh, on the scale of things, an easy song for both these players, so it's hard to say what will happen. I will say this one's a little bit tough to come off of not playing for a little bit. Neither of them have been off the pads for too long. But step jumps like this, if your knees aren't ready to do it, it's pretty grueling. I think we're seeing a little bit of that with Malia right now. Yeah, about 30 seconds into the song, she starts to falter a little on a few jumps, and then she rushes a good bit, and uh, Eggplant takes a lead. Yeah, I think you were exactly right. Jumps? especially spam eighth note step jumps can be extremely rough on your calves to come back to if you're not fully warm. And these pads, you know, it is a gold cab as opposed to a white cab, so they feel differently on your legs than you might be used to. A jump form takes a huge impact from that on unfamiliar pads. It looks like it might be wearing yeah. down eggplant a little, but yeah. she had quite a sizable lead. Eggplant takes song one, moving into a very different song. Song two is going to be Boss Rush Expert 16. I like this chart. It's hard and annoying, but it is somehow fun, and it's a banger. I come from playing Sound Voltex, where Boss Rush does not have a slowdown. So my opinion on this song is always the very unpopular. Why does this have a slowdown? The slowdown feels very musical. It does. I... Everybody gets their one bad take. That one's mine. <laughs> it's all right. At the last event, I had Nightman in my ear telling me that Splash Gold was not a banger. So you absolutely have a pass on this one. We love you, Nightman. Nightman is, a, for those who are not, a, not in the know, Nightman is another player who will be competing in singles later. And Nightman yeah, has I, I some I shouldn't say that opinions. in a way that, that, that makes it sound like we're not friends or something. Of course, that was a blast. But of course, we like poking fun at him for takes. 
shout outs to one of everybody's favorite Life 4 Discord moderators, Nightman. And just very supportive community member. Absolutely. All right, both starting out pretty strong here. Malia's terrifying MA is coming to fruition. Yeah, so like we were alluding to, the sort of standout part of the song in DDR is a very long slowdown for something close to the middle third of the song. Malia slips a bit on a drilly pattern of 16th notes, and here comes the slowdown. A lot of 32nd note triplets in the 16 version, along with some of those jacks that characterize the 14 version as well. And jumps for that matter. Arguably pattern better because they aren't just random jacks, but not easier. This is wild for me to say, but I think I kind of agree that I like the 16 chart better than the 14. The weird one is when people say that about monkey business. Yeah, that, that, that 13 is just too good to, to, to ever put down to anything. Eggplant handily ahead after the slowdown. She just negotiated it very well and kept her combo. Once you're out of the slowdown, if you can handle that, you can probably handle anything in the rest of this because it's similar movements but easier to read. You're going to have to sort of move back and forth for 16th note triplets that sometimes start in odd places. But overall, it's nothing terribly new or surprising to close out the song. just to show off at the end of that one, wow. Chat says, normal take on Boss Rush, 16 over 14. Yeah, I agree. I just yeah. felt a little dirty saying I like the 16. <laughs> um, congratulations to Eggplant. Absolutely phenomenal. 